Hey guys, Casey Ferris here. Thanks for checking out another video of mine here on YouTube. Today we are talking about making a call out animation inside of the Fusion tab in DaVinci Resolve. This is something I've gotten quite a bit of requests for. And even if you're not looking to do this exact type of animation, this exact type of graphic, it should be really useful to you to learn a little bit of basics of the Fusion tab and kind of how things work. So let's look at our footage. We have this little dolly shot of somebody looking out at the lake. And what we wanna do is have a little pop-up graphic here that says this person's name that is tracked along with the footage, kind of follows along with the movement there. So we're gonna start by tracking that motion. I'm gonna select my media in node. I'm gonna hit control space and I'm gonna find a planar tracker and hit enter. That's gonna bring up my planar tracker in my viewer here. Now I'm gonna to go to the beginning of the shot, zoom in here, and I'm gonna select the part that I want to track. Something like this. Under tracker, I'm gonna say hybrid point slash area and just use translation. I'm gonna make sure I'm at the frame I wanna start with and I'm gonna hit set on my reference time and then hit track to end. Let's play through it. Shouldn't be messing up too bad. Okay, that should work for our composite here. Once the track's done, I'm gonna hit create planar transform. And what that's gonna do is add a new node to my graph called planar transform. And what we're gonna do is connect whatever we want to have that movement to this planar transform. So we'll just set that aside and work on that in a second. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and get a couple of my viewers here. Bring my viewers up. I'm gonna close my effects library because I'm just gonna use some shortcuts here. Control space. I'm gonna start with text plus and let's call this friend grandpa. Yeah, grandpa. Bring it up in my viewer here, it says grandpa. Let's do all caps. Yeah, grandpa, sick. Now this isn't showing up in our composite because we haven't actually connected it to anything yet. I'm gonna select my planar tracker, hit control space and type MRG. That's gonna bring up a merge node and I can connect my text to my foreground of my merge node. And if I want the text to follow the motion of the tracker, I can just grab this planar transform, hold down shift and put that in between my text and my merge. And now look what happens. Oh yeah, grandpa has his name right on that chair. Neat. And we're gonna put this over here. And that's essentially most of the work. That's pretty much most of the work there. We have some match move text kind of stuck to this guy's head. But you know what? Let's make it a little bit prettier. First of all, I'm gonna add a let to this footage to make it look less horrible. I'm gonna select my media in and hit control space and type LUT. That's gonna bring up my file LUT tool. This is where you can browse to any LUT on your system. The LUT I'm gonna use is called Heron D-Log2 Rec709, and that's going to make my footage look a little bit nicer. This particular LUT is available at groundcontrolcolor.com. Just click under free LUTs and go to, and it's right here, free D-Log2 Rec709 LUT. This is designed to make your drone footage, to take your flat gray looking drone footage and make it look nice because this shot actually was shot with a drone just really close to the ground. So that does a pretty decent job of giving us some nicer colors. And now let's make these graphics look a little better. Um, first thing I wanna do is add like a little background to this, which shockingly I'm gonna do by hitting Control Spacebar and hitting BG, and that will bring up a background node and it will merge it with our text. Of course, because it's super convenient, it's gonna put the text in the background and the background in the foreground, which is dumb. But if I select the merge node and hit control T, that's gonna swap the foreground and the background on my merge node. Now, I don't want my background to just be like the most in the way ever. I just want it to be around the text. So I'm gonna select my background node, hit control space bar and type XF. That's gonna bring up my transform tool, hit okay. Now I can kind of change the size and position of my background. And because my text and my background is getting merged before it hits the planar transform, all of this the motion is still applied to everything that I'm doing here. That's an easy way to adjust the way this looks. I'm gonna select my background layer and maybe, let's do like a light gray, something like that. Let's take a second and clean this up. I'll line up all my tools to a grid. And now if I grab my merge tool, I can also hit a, I can also add a transform after that so I can move this around without too much trouble. There I have my little name label. So this is pretty good, but let's say I want to add a drop shadow to this. What I'm gonna do is give myself a little bit of room here. After this transform node, hit control space bar and type shadow. And that's gonna add a drop shadow to this background layer. And if I adjust my offset, 
and I can have something that looks a little bit nicer. I'll change this shadow color to something, something tasty. If I wanna add a similar shadow to my text, I can just select my node, hit Control C, and then click off of it and hit Control V. Then I can shift drag this onto my connector between my text and my merge, and then just adjust the spacing of that shadow to be a little bit better for that. So that's pretty much doing what we want. Now, let's say we want this to animate on. We can do that about a million different ways, but let's try it just kind of popping up, like scaling up. I'm gonna grab this transform node. This is the node that controls where all of these graphics sit. I'm gonna start by adjusting the pivot. So that's where this rotates and scales from, okay? With my transform node selected, I'm gonna go to my pivot tool and just click and drag inside of the numbers here until this little green part ends up right here on my graphics. Now, if I were to size this down, it scales from that point, which is what I want. So let's go to almost the beginning of the shot where we want this to come in. And right here where it says size, I'll click this little diamond to add a keyframe. Then I'm gonna go forward. Then I'm gonna go back a couple frames to where I want this to be gone and just drag my size all the way down. So now, if I play this, we see it pops up like that. Hey, that's nice. And because I'm only adjusting the size and not the center or anything like that, I can still grab my transform and adjust where this comes in. Pop, that's grandpa. Yeah, nice. Let's say this is way too big. I can go past my last keyframe and then hit left and hit this little arrow that points left right by my keyframe diamond and adjust the size. And that's gonna be adjusting that keyframe. So now it'll just pop up a little bit smaller. Nice, that is grandpa, yeah. So that's the basic idea, we're almost done. Last thing I'm gonna do is adjust the animation of this scale. I'm gonna do that with my spline panel. I'm gonna go up here to where it says spline, click that, and what I'm looking for is transform three, and I'll just add a check mark to transform three, give myself a little space here, and I'll click this button right here, which will focus on the actual keyframes just for transform three under size, can select these keyframes and hit F, and that will flatten out those keyframes. So it'll kind of ease in and ease out. Let's see how this looks. Boom, yeah, that's nice. I can even do something crazy like add another keyframe and then have this kind of bounce in and come back. You can get really detailed with this, this panel. So let's Take a look with how that looks with that kind of bouncy animation. Yeah, it looks nice. So there you go, there's our, there's our little callout graphic. And you can use this basic idea to create any variation of this. You could add a mask to the, to the background and have kind of a custom shape. You could add all kinds of effects, but it really comes down to kind of this same way of doing things, is you're tracking whatever you want it to stick to and building all your graphics right here and putting them through that planar transform that you generate and putting it on top. So there you go, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. If you like this, hit like. And for more videos on DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, post-production, all those things, make sure to hit that subscribe button, turn the notifications on. My name again is Casey Ferris, I will catch you next time.